and welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new. So in this video, I am going to talk about Zern and how we use Zern in our homeschool. If you are new to my channel, please make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my future uploads. I'd gotten a question about Zern and how we use it. So I thought I would quickly put this video together for any of those who are curious about Zern, but a little bit intimidated by it. I promise you, once you are in it, it is really simple and my kids are able to use it independently at this point, both my pre-Ker and my first grader. So this is something that I think can be really helpful. It is a free math resource and I love things that are free that I also can really depend on for quality educational content. So I am happy to share how to navigate it. So the first thing that I want to specify is that it is zern.org, not zern.com. So if you're trying to get onto the website, make sure you're doing .org. But once on the website, you'll create an email and a password. And so you can sign up for free. And again, this is not a seven day trial or anything like that. Everything about this site is free. Once you sign in, you have a full dashboard up here. And I would say the first thing you wanna do, I mean, if you wanna play around with the website and find the different things, that's fine. But you are gonna have to create a roster. And I think this is where it might get a little confusing for people, but you do have to basically create a class. So this is what my class looks like. I have Alani and Emmy, and then I assigned both of them a grade. But if you were going into here new, you would add a student, and then you would put the first and last name here. You literally just follow these directions. So one name per line, just follow the directions here. And once you do that, you're going to choose a username and a password. My girls never have to remember this. I have logged them in and it is something that is saved. They don't have to put in the username or the password. It is just something that is automatic for them. But you are gonna have to create this information and choose the grade for your child. So once you have this here, if you needed to add another student, you could do that as well. And you can just do it from this spot. But once you have that selected, you're going to go to the next area and choose the starting point. Now, if you have not already gone through, you might not know exactly where to start if you're not starting at the beginning. So that would be a good opportunity to go through so you actually understand what all this is. But I'm going to just set this for kindergarten, numbers to 10, and then A. And then I'll go through what all of this means but this part you don't have to print. This is when I taught this was something that the students had with them. If they were going to the computer lab, then they would use this information to sign in. But this is nothing that you really need in your homeschool unless you just want to have it. So as you can see, there is another student that is now in my class. And if I wanted to change anything from here, I could change what level they are at, I can change the grade, any of those things. And then this right here, the fluency timing settings, this is for if things are timed. For a while, I left things untimed for my oldest, but she actually does like having the timer. So I did change it so that sometimes she does have some timed things. We're just gonna go up here to curriculum though, because I think it's pretty important to understand what all of this is. So I'm gonna go to kindergarten. Again, I can choose a grade here and then choose the specific mission, but I'm just gonna go right to kindergarten so you can kind of see the overview. Now these are the different modules. And so this has 
six modules, as you can see here, and each module focuses on a different thing. As I said, this completely aligns with the math that we use. So whatever I would be working on in the book lines up for module one, module two, and then all the way through module six for kindergarten. I'm not doing anything in the book for Emmy. She's just been working through here, but this allows you to see an overview of the modules. So if I go into module one, which is numbers through 10, there is an independent digital lesson for each one, and then each of them has different lessons within it. So this is all for module one. These are all of the lessons that are part of module one, looks to be 37 lessons. So if you are just using this as is, you can just go with the order of lessons, but if you're trying to go in here and just get a little bit extra of something specific, this is what helps you to figure that out. And so if I'm going down, I could look at four and five, maybe working on the numbers four and five. There's gonna be a counting train activity. The math chat is when they give instruction and then Tower of Power is when they practice what they learned in that math chat. The math chat normally has time for them to practice, but it's a completely guided practice. They're not doing anything on their own. And then both of these, the fluency and the independent practice those are on their own. So if I click on this, I will see exactly what it is. It will take me to the activity and I can see what they will be doing. So here they're identifying how many there is and then choosing the correct number. And then if I click on the math chat, this is when they do the full guided practice. Math chat with Miss Parker. Even see one of your favorite animals. So I really like how interactive this is. All of these points that you see right here are gonna be something interactive. So if I went over here, you'll see that you're supposed to count and then choose the number. Again, we're working on the numbers four and five in this one, so that's where we have it. But if you were to, if your student was to click the wrong one, then they do give them a little bit of help Press the button to count the starfish with me. One, two, three, four. This is four. I love that there is that guidance there if they do struggle a little bit with getting a correct answer. And then the lessons have an area for notes. And I'll show you where you can get that ahead of the actual lesson. But if you were in the lesson, you could also print it and give it to your child. Since they were working on four and five, this is what it is. So as you can see, super simple, super approachable. I am at the kindergarten level here right now, but this has just been the reason why I was able to start this when my daughter is so young, because it is just so easy to approach it. And then you'll see in the next part, they completely walk them through the notes. Let's work on this together. We'll go step by step. One, two, three, four. So as you can see, that is for every single one. And you'll see this because there's no independent digital lesson that goes with the lesson they would be learning in the Eureka Math program. So that's why it says that. And then you would just skip to lesson 12 for that. You can still use all of this even if you don't use the Eureka curriculum. And then if I go up to the top, this is what I was talking about here. You can print all of the notes right here. This area here also gives you the lessons, answer keys, all of the information that you need for the students. So everything is just right here. And that's for all of the grades that they have. So this goes K to eight. So I just jumped to explore Lank for second grade just to show you a different grade. So if I open up here meter or centimeter, you will see that there's still the fluency, the guided practice, the guided practice and the independent practice and it's just different fluency. This sprint would be one of those things that's timed. So if I open that up, you'll see what a sprint is. They get 1 minute and they answer as many as they can. So these are the different things. It is just building that fluency. So they would answer with these and then put the enter and then at the end, it checks the work with them. So I'm just gonna go back 
to the home so that you can see. So again, this is your roster. This is where you'd be putting your kids. This is basically what I was doing, trying it as a student, seeing what it was like. That's what I just showed you. And I don't really use the reports much. Every once in a while I check in, but I am normally with my kids so I can kind of see how they're doing. This you really won't need. This is for if you were sending things home to a family. You really only need to know how to set up your kid and where to put them within the Zern curriculum. If I go to resources though, there's just so many other things to help you with understanding as well as just inspiration things for your kids. So if you go into Discover Zern, there is just all of the different things that you can use to understand it a little bit more. So if you want it a little bit more for yourself, then this video, there's just a lot of things that you can go into and figure out. So that's basically all you need to know. I'm rarely on this home page. I have my girls set up, they log in, they do what they need to do, and that's about it. I really don't use much else within this website. I will just show you what it does look like when my daughters log on. So this is what my daughter sees when she logs on. Again, she doesn't have to type anything in. I have it saved on her tablet. I have it saved on my computer. So whatever she is using, she doesn't have to type in a password or anything. She just hits this start button and she's ready to go. A lot of the games are repeated or similar. There are new games every once in a while and they're really quick to catch on to. So this shows what she's doing next. It shows what she completed. I can just click out of these. We don't have to see all of these things. If I wanted to make it a lot less cluttered, then it would be just this. So I do like, it doesn't bother my daughter at all, but I do like that you can just make it super simple. So as you saw, there are so many great things within the Zern website. Now it is a website, there is no app that I know of, but we still use it just fine on my girls' tablets. I can use it on my own tablet, my computer. I accessed it on my phone, even though I do get an alert saying that like it's not necessarily made for that but I've had no problem accessing on different devices. We, going into the next school year, will be using it in a different way. I will make a separate video about what our math pick is and what our changes are and stuff like that. But I just wanted to make sure I had this video out because I know someone asked about it and it's been one that I've been meaning to make, but I just hadn't gotten to it. So hopefully this is helpful for anyone who is looking into using this free math resource. As always, thank you so much for your support on my channel and I will see you in the next video. Bye.